I am David, your developer on duty, and in this video we're gonna start a new Rust project and the first step is to deserialize some JSON structure into a Rust type. Let me first give you a high level overview of our project. At my day job, I'm working on a framework called the Cloud Application Programming Model, and it is a set of tools to efficiently build applications. At the heart of it is the domain modeling, which lets you define the semantics of your application. That means, for example, you can define entities and their relations to each other without having to deal with technical details. The underlying language is pretty concise and enables quick prototyping without boilerplate coding. It can be compiled to a JSON structure called the core schema notation. It's meant to be processed by further tools, for example, to create database tables. Now, as part of my efforts to learn more about the Rust programming language, I want to take that JSON file and create a generic web server, which is capable of handling the usual CRUD requests. As a first step, and this is the topic of today's video, I want to create a Rust data structure and deserialize that JSON file. For this, I will use the create SERD. Let's get started and create a new directory called semantics, which will be the name of our new crate. Let's run cargo init. And I want a library. Let's first create a test folder where we can store some example files so we know how the resulting JSON file will look like. Inside test, we can create a new example file called example CDS, where CDS is the file ending of our domain language. And here we can define our entities. For example, entity books, they have a key ID of type integer, they have a title of type string, and they will have an author ID of type integer. We can also have authors. Also here we have an ID of type integer, first name of type string, and last name of type string. Now let's see how the corresponding JSON core schema notation file looks like. For this we can use the command cds compile to compile this example cds file. And you can see the output here. It's an object which has definitions. Inside here we have our books entity, which is of kind entity and has uh, the following three elements. There's one with key equals to true. And then we have some primitive types, cds integer, cds string. And for the authors entity, we have similar things. And in, in addition to that, we also have some metadata. Let's store this output in a JSON file. Let's start with our Rust coding and open our librs file. Here you can see there's already a test available. Let's first create a test so we can see how our API should look like. We call it load example model. And in this test, we want to say let model equals to load model, where we provide the path to our file. And of course, it cannot find the function load model because we haven't defined it yet. So let's do this. Pub function load model, and it will be generic over some um, type p, which implements as ref of path. So this is the usual way to have some file path, and we call it path. And in the end, it will return a result of model. This is our type, which we have to define later. And it can also fail, and we call it semantics error. Now you can see that it still cannot find load model because it's not in the scope and we have to write use super star. First, we have to load the content of the file. So we can just write let content equals to standard fs read to string and we give the path. 
and this also might fail. So let's see if that works. But also let's get rid of the errors first. So we can already define our model, pubstruct model. Let's just make it empty and we can define our error, pub enum semantics error. Also this one will be empty. Now we also have to return something. Let's just say we create a new model and return it. Now we have to bring path in scope. So we can import standard path path. And now we can test it, cargo test. And you can see our test passes. Now let's quickly also check that the content is read properly. So we can write debug content. And if we run cargo test, you can see that nothing is printed. But if we run cargo test with dash dash and then dash dash no capture, we can also see the output. And in this case, you can see that we have correctly um, read the string. So let's take a little bit care of our error handling. So semantic error will might cause some IO error. And uh, the moment we do this, let's see import standard IO. The moment we do this, we can also use our question mark operator. But for this, we have to also convert the IO error to our semantic error. So for this, we can implement from with IO error for our semantics error. Let's implement the missing members. So we only need to provide this from function here. And it's super simple what we have to return. It's just semantics error IO of this incoming error. Now the question is how do we go from our string to our model? And for this we can use the create surdy. So let's edit surdy version must be 1.0. Features shall be the derived macro. And we want surdy underscore JSON in version 1.0. Now, if you run cargo build, it will install the dependencies. I already did that to speed up the process. It takes 15 seconds. So now let's do this. We write surdy JSON from stir. We provide a reference to content. And we have to provide a way to tell them that this is of type model. Now the compiler tells us that the trade bound deserialize is not implemented for model. So we need to implement it. And now the good thing is that we can just derive it. So we can write use surdy deserialize. And now we can write derive deserialize. And now the compiler complains that the error which is returned by surdy json from stir cannot be converted into our semantics error. And a quick trick to see what needs to be done is by running cargo check. And you can see that the trade from surdy json error is not implemented. So let's implement this. So we write impl from surdy json error for our semantics error. Let's implement the missing members. And now we have to enhance our semantics error. Let's just say parse. And it has surdy json error. And now we can write semantics error parse of error. Let's run a quick cargo check. 
and you can see it works. Now let's concentrate on how to define this model struct by looking at the example output which we have here. So you can see at top level we have this uh, definitions block which is an object containing all those definitions and each definition um, has a certain kind and has elements. So in Rust we can model it like this. We can say, okay, it has a field called definitions, which is a hash map of string and a type, which we call definition. Now let's import hash map. And we have to define the type definition. Now for definition, we could also in principle create a struct which has the fields kind and elements, but it's a bit better to define it as an enum. You can see the kind entity basically defines what type this definition is. It can be an entity and it can also be some other types. So let's define it as an enum. So we write pub enum definition. And it can be an entity, which is an entity which we have to define. So again, we derive deserialize, but now we have to tell Surdy what the discriminator is. So we can just write Surdy tag equals to kind. And we can also rename all those fields to camel case. So for this, we can write rename all equals to camel case. Now for entity, we can do exactly the same. Pub struct entity, we derive deserialize, and now it has a field called elements, which is a hash map, which maps from string to something which we call element. Now let's keep it simple and define element. We also derive deserialize. It has a property key, which is of type bool, and also a type of type string. Now the problem is type is, an, is a reserved keyword, so we just say this is element underscore type. But now we have to tell Surdy that it's actually another name. So we write Surdy rename deserialize equals to type. Now, in principle, we could also have used an enum for those elements because there are not so many. There are integers, strings, and a few others. But those additional fields like key and so on are always the same for all of them. So it might make sense to just do it like this. In our case, we could have at least put some enum here for the element type. Now there's one little thing we have to take care of. This key property is not on all elements, so we can just write surdy default. That means if this property is not there, it will use the default value of bool, which is false. Now let's see how the final model looks like if we parse it. And for this, we need to derive not only deserialize, but also debug. And we also need to derive it for our error. And now we can bubble it up. So if everything is okay, we provide a, an empty tuple. And if something fails, we provide our semantics error. And now we can debug it. Now let's see if it works. And you can see our model was parsed. 
we have our model definitions authors which is of kind entity which is a struct which has elements and here are the elements of type element and uh, most of the time key is defaulted to false but sometimes key is defaulted to true and we have here the element type to the various things seems to work that's it for now in the next video we will cover more cases and improve our type definitions where we'll use more advanced features of 30. i hope you like this video thanks for watching and stay tuned